I'm Shriyandi and today we are going to learn about biomedical waste management. First of all, we should know what is biomedical waste. So, biomedical waste is waste generated in the diagnosis, treatment or immunization of human beings or animals or in research or in production or testing of biological products. It also includes waste coming out of medical treatment given at home. So, any waste which is coming out from home during medical treatment, hospitals or any research activities which is related to treating human body, then it is known as biomedical waste. So what do you mean by hazardous waste? Any waste with a potential to pose a threat to human and life is known as hazardous waste. Now, what are the sources of biomedical waste? From where this biomedical waste is generated? So, biomedical waste is mostly generated from clinics, hospitals, nursing homes, blood banks, animal houses, home if dressing is done at home or any other hospital related activity or any medical treatment is done at home, then the waste related to that is known as biomedical waste. So, these are the sources of biomedical waste. Nursing homes are also a source of biomedical waste. Any research activity which is helping in treating human body and the waste related to that is also known as biomedical waste. Waste from the laboratories are also known as biomedical waste. These are some sources of biomedical waste, pathological labs. These all are sources of biomedical waste. Now, there are different types of waste which are generated in biomedical waste. So, one is hazardous and one is non-hazardous waste. Hazardous waste which are life-threatening waste are known as hazardous waste. So, non-hazardous waste are biodegradable and non-biodegradable. That means degradable means that means they dissolve in the soil and non-degradable means that it cannot degrade itself. So, that is a non-degradable waste. So, hazardous waste has two types, potentially toxic and potentially infectious. So, what do you mean by potentially toxic waste? Potentially toxic waste is the waste which is very, very poisonous in the environment and dangerous. And what is potentially infectious? The waste which can cause infection to other human beings or animals, then it is known as potentially infectious waste. One which can or which may cause infection to the other human beings or animals. Mostly toxic waste which is known as poisonous waste. Potentially toxic waste is a waste which is very poisonous and potentially infectious waste is a waste which can cause infection to other human beings or animals. So chemical and radioactive waste are known as toxic waste because they are poisonous and pharmaceutical waste are also known as toxic waste. What is potentially infectious waste? Organic matters, laboratory residues and sharp things. For example, a needle uh, which is used for in the syringe to give injection to the patient and that infected needle is thrown in the dustbin, then it is known as infectious waste. In laboratory, there are several elements, urine samples, stool samples of patients are collected which are infectious. If that waste is discarded in the dustbin, then it is known as infectious waste. Even organic means human organs. For example, if you take uh, human organs which are infect infected and then they are removed from human body, then they, they are known as potentially infectious waste. So, the hospital waste is considered into two categories, classified into two categories, hazardous and non-hazardous waste. Non-hazardous waste may be degradable or non-degradable. Hazardous waste are toxic or infectious. Toxic waste mostly are eliminated from radioactive elements, chemical laboratories and pharmaceutical waste. And potentially infectious waste are organic waste, laboratory waste and the waste which, ha which are sharp elements which can cause cut in our body and then they can transfuse the infection in our body. That is known as potentially infectious waste. Now, mixed hospital waste before project. So, first earlier if biomedical waste management was not there, then all the waste was collected together. 
this is showing all type of waste together in dustbin. So people who are collecting this waste are at utmost risk because it consists of biomedical waste which can be infectious and toxic also. Now as per notified rule biomedical waste is not to be mixed with other waste because it is infectious and toxic. Biomedical waste should be segregated in specific container bag at the site of generation. Each container has to be specifically labeled. Transportation of such waste has to be done in specific vehicle only. Untreated biomedical waste is not to be stored beyond period of 48 hours. Certain rules we should consider if we are managing the biomedical waste. First of all, the waste should be labeled so people don't touch that waste unless and until they know how to handle that waste. Then the transportation should be done in specific vehicle only. There should be a separate vehicle for biomedical waste. And then the untreated, the one who is not, the waste which is not treated properly should not be stored for more than 48 hours. Now, there are different categories of biomedical waste. So we know the sources of waste, what is biomedical waste, how they are classified. Now what kind of waste is considered as biomedical waste and how they are divided in different categories. So the first category is human anatomical waste. So any part of our body is discarded out or taken out from our body then it is known as category 1 human anatomical waste. Human tissue, organs, body parts are in first category. Second type of biomedical waste is animal waste. Again animal tissues, organs, body parts, bleeding parts, fluid, experimental animal used in research, waste generated by veterinary hospital, colleges, discharge from hospitals, animal houses. These all type of animal waste is known as category 2 type of waste in biomedical waste management. Now, third is microbiology and biotechnology waste. So waste from laboratory cultures who are taking our samples, urine sample and stool samples, waste from that laboratory comes under category 3. Human and animal cell culture, infectious agent from research and industrial laboratories, waste from production of biologicals, etc. So the waste from laboratories, the infectious agents are known as category 3 type of waste. Category 4, waste sharp. So the waste which is sharp, which can cause cut in our body is known as category 4 type of waste. Needles, syringe, scalps, blade, glass, they may cause punctures and cuts. So this type of waste is known as category 2 type of waste. Category 5 type of waste is discarded medicines and cytotoxic drugs. So the waste, expiry medicines, contaminated and discarded medicines are in category 5 type of waste. Category 6 is soil waste. Items contaminated with blood and body fluids including cotton. So cotton is used to clean the blood. Then it is a soil waste. Soil, plaster casts, lines, beading, other material contaminated with the blood, the bed sheet which may be having blood stains then it is known as category 6 type of waste which is known as soiled waste. Now solid waste which is category 7. Waste generated from disposable items other than sharp such as tubing, catheters, intravenous sets etc. So the catheters, intravenous sets all are known as solid waste. Now, category 8 type of waste is liquid waste, waste generated from laboratory and washing, cleaning, housekeeping and disinfection activities that is category 8 type of waste. Category 9 is insernation ash. After the waste is burned, ash is created from that waste. So that is insernation waste. So that waste comes under category 9. Category 10, chemical waste. Chemical used in production of biologicals, chemical used in disinfections as insecticides, etc. So any for any research activity, chemicals used, chemical used to wash the clothes and disinfect them, that all comes under category 10 type of waste. So how can we manage biomedical waste? So biomedical waste is managed under six steps. 
first the waste is generated what is the next step we have to do the next step is segregation of the waste which is very very important the first step of management of biomedical waste is segregating that means separating the waste uh, separating the waste according to the category second is collecting the waste how we have to collect the waste from the place from the dustbins then how we can treat the waste according to the categories then the transportation of that waste and then at the end terminal disposal of the waste so management of biomedical waste is divided into six categories now how we can segregate the waste that is the first part of the management after generation of the waste the first thing we need to do is segregate the waste so that segregation of biomedical waste is a key to successful biomedical waste management biomedical waste should not be mixed with any other kind of waste it should be separated and segregated at the point of generation before storage or transport the container should be labeled according to the schedule so what we need to do is first we need to segregate the waste and then label it so how we can segregate the waste so the segregation of waste is done by creating dustbins of different colors so there is a green color dustbin there is a red color dustbin there is a yellow color dustbin and white and black color dustbin if you visit any hospital you can see that there are different color dustbin placed at every floor so what is the meaning why they have placed different color dustbin they have placed different color dustbin to segregate the waste to separate the waste so that they can treat according to the waste so the green color dustbin consists of waste which is not harmful so if someone is eating fruits in that hospital so the waste related to that is thrown in green color dustbin what is thrown in red color dustbin so non sharp soil waste for example there are some waste which are infectious but they are non sharp so they cannot cause puncture or cut so that type of waste so for example it consists of syringe plastic gloves these are infectious waste but they are non sharp waste so the next is yellow container what does yellow container consist yellow container consist of human organs or animal organs in that dustbin white color dustbin so white color dustbin is specifically used for sharp waste so the waste which is infectious like needle syringe blades scalps those all waste are collected in white color dustbin because they are sharp waste and they can cause puncture and cut black color dustbin is mostly utilized for discarded medicines so the one medicines which are expired that waste is collected in black color dustbin so first is green color dustbin that is for normal waste plastic packaging material fruits any waste which is non infectious not related to hospital treatment then that waste goes under green color dustbin red color dustbin consists of infectious waste but they are non sharp infectious waste for example cotton gloves dressing pads then bottles these all waste com comes under red color dustbin yellow color dustbin consists of human organs animal organs so organs which are infectious that is in yellow color dustbin white color dustbin consists of sharp waste infectious sharp waste blade needle scalps these all are under white color dustbin and discarded medicines are in black color dustbin so the waste is separated by color coding the dustbin so that is known as segregation of waste so first we need to do what we need to do is segregate the waste second is labeling of the waste so once you segregate the waste all bags and containers for biomedical waste should be marked with biohazard symbol so people should know that they should not touch this waste so biohazard symbol should be there on the dustbin so if you see this kind of symbol on any dustbin that means it is a hazardous waste or it can be infectious waste also inside that dustbin now transportation each healthcare facility should have a healthcare waste management plan 
which should include collection points and route of waste transport. A timetable of the frequency of collection should also be set up. So here, in biomedical waste management, transportation is also a very important part of waste management. So there should be a plan of transporting biomedical waste and there should be a set frequency on this day, at this hour, at this time I'll collect the waste. So there should be a scheduled timing to collect the waste and that is how we should manage the transportation of biomedical waste. Now, what is the good practice in management of waste? The bag should only be filled only to the two-third of its capacity. So don't fill the bag fully. Only fill the bag till two-third capacity. Then bag should be sealed and labeled from the source of generation. So it should be sealed and labeled according to the waste. If it's infectious, sharp waste, then label it and also mention the source of generation that this waste is from operation theater, this waste is from ICU, this waste is from general ward. So if sometime if there is a problem in waste handling then it can be managed easily. Now untreated biomedical waste should only be transported in a vehicle as may be authorized for the purpose by the competent authority. So only if a competent authority tells you to transport that waste, then only you can transport the waste if it is untreated. No untreated biomedical waste should be kept stored beyond a period of 48 hours. So it has to be treated in 48 hours. If it needed to be stored beyond this period, then the authorized person should take permission from the competent authority. Biomedical waste should be transported within the hospital by means of wheel trolley that are not used for any other purpose. So it should be transported in a wheel trolley, should not be utilized for any other purpose. This trolley should not have sharp edges and should be cleaned daily. So the cleaning process should be done daily. Biohazard symbol should be painted on the trolley. So the transportation is very, very important. If by accident there is spillage of the waste, then you have to cordon the whole area, wash it and clean it properly. So the transportation of waste should be managed properly, specifically biomedical waste should be managed properly. Now, you can see here, this is a wheel trolley, which is the correct way to transport biomedical waste with the symbol of biomedical waste hazard. And the other person who is not wearing gloves, it is overloaded and there is no biomedical waste hazard symbol. So this should be taken care while transporting the waste. Now, transportation of biomedical waste should be away from patient care unit. So the vehicle which is transporting biomedical waste should have a symbol of biomedical waste hazard. Plus it should be written that, that the vehicle contains biomedical waste. So if there is an accident, people will act accordingly because it contains infectious waste in it. So thank you for watching this video. In the next lecture of biomedical waste management, we learn about the treatment of waste. Till now what we have learned? We have learned what is biomedical waste, how we should segregate the waste and how we should transport the biomedical waste. So these all things we have learned in today's lecture. In next lecture we are going to learn about the treatment procedure of biomedical waste. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next lecture of biomedical waste management.